What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of DGS2 Case 3. So, uh, <laughs> Holmes has broken his, like, wax figure mode, and we are about to fall into a joint reasoning with him shortly. It's gonna start as soon as I press the A button on here. Uh, about the incident that has occurred at the Wax Museum that Mr. Saad is hiding from us. Yeah, sure, let's pretend he's wearing his detective outfit. <laughs> oh, sorry, the first topic was the disappearance of the wax figure. What on earth is happening here at this, this wax museum? The answer is indicated by the sack of bills peering cutely from your purse. As far as I can tell, you appear to be to have around 200 pounds there. Th this is my money. So then, what is this meaning? What is the meaning behind the huge sum of money? The direction of your gaze is incredibly honest, Madame Roussard. The thing it's aimed at is our answer. The meaning behind that 200 pounds is indicated by this placard. Wax figure for sale, huh? It seems that business isn't going so well these days. In other words, you... sold the serial killer in the special exhibit room for 200 pounds. What? Now then, let us investigate the next question at hand. Just who is this middle-aged man enjoying a good faint here? It would appear that the man was dealt a quite a terrible blow. You wouldn't happen to know what it was that made him pass out, would you? Uh... Unfortunately, it seems you're not very good at hiding things. The thing that dealt that man the blow was that 200 pounds. Apparently, you had that man completely wrapped around your little finger. What, what are you implying? That man was made to buy that wax figure for 200 pounds. The moment he forked over the cash, the size of the sum suddenly hit him. However, he couldn't get his 200 pounds back. And it was that realization that left him in that state. Okay, Holmes, sure. You sold the serial killer in that room with, for an incredible sum. I pray that the dreams that man is having right now are at least sweet ones. <laughs> and he just transports into his detective outfit. The disappearance of the wax figure. It was sold. Second topic, the location of the wax figure. Now then, we must now ask, where did the wax figure in question go? Let us consider that question. Next, excuse me. How can you... The thing that catches my attention at this point are the folks standing over there. Just who is this man? The answer can be found in the scarf around his neck, of course. The scarf is code used between Scotland Yard officers to notify each other that there is a crime in progress. That youth is a plainclothes detective. He's currently investigating this museum. I know him well. That's Police Sergeant... That's Police Sergeant John Clay, isn't it? John Clay! Yes. Why are you rolling along with this? I'm pretty sure he's still a wax figure. He's made quite the name for himself after winning the Superintendent General Award three times last year. I recognized him at once. Well... Now let us direct our attention to the sinister looking old man sitting near him. He hasn't moved a muscle this whole time. Almost as if he's a wax figure. Uh, well... I thought so. You reacted to my words just now, madam. The moment I laid eyes on him, I noticed it. This tag. Whether or not this old man is a wax figure is indicated by this price tag. What? Three pence. What a pitifully low price he's been given. But I suppose that's the best you can get for an old wax figure full of cracks. Wow. And you sold him to that odd bird of a man for 200 pounds. And it was that that spurred Scotland Yard and, and that's... And it was that that spurred Scotland Yard into action, madam. B but... 
The wax figure has already been recovered and is now in possession of the police. I'd like to return that elderly wax figure to the cemetery where he belongs. Conclusion. The wax figure was already found. So the answer is the wax figure was not actually found. Right? And this has been Sherlock Holmes' famous deduction. Famous deduction indeed. More like infamous. <laughs> Rizal is ready to like toss this in his face. You all seem to be shocked into silence, folks. Hmm, I mean... That wax she's got is boiling with a pretty threatening vigor. Um, Homesan, can I ask you something? Oh! Got a question for me again this time, have you? Well, fire away! The fact that that old police officer was being displayed in the special exhibit room would have to mean that he's an especially terrifying serial killer, right? The murderous officer, Otterbole! Huh? Last year, a string of mysterious murders occurred that had all of London quaking in its boots. As soon as officers would arrive on each new crime scene, the killer would vanish like a puff of smoke in the wind. The killer actually turned out to be a patrol officer, Sergeant Artemo. Uh, and that's who this grumpy looking old guy is? Indeed, you could tell just by looking at that terrifying, sinister looking face of his. It looks like he's asleep in my opinion. If my memory isn't mistaken, that's exactly what he looked like. I don't trust your memory, Sherlock. Anyway, is 200 pounds really that much money? Well, for that amount, you could probably afford the news motto of steam-powered car. That's... I guess it must be a lot then. Any last words? Before I turn you into a wax figure, that is. The bubbling of the madam's wax is looking more threatening by the second. Oh, that wax even smells dangerous. Well, I mean, he basically called her a criminal to her face. It looks like I have no choice but to ask you to lend me a hand this time, Iris Chan. <gasps> That's right, Sasato isn't here! Iris is your sidekick! Homesan's seduction needs some help. Of course! Leave it to me! Well, let's get right to it then. Quickly, before Madame Rasad lets that stuff fly. I was waiting for you to say that, folks! Now then, as you requested, Madame Rasad, allow me to show you the prowess of this great and famous detective turned temporary wax figure. Uh huh. Alright, let's fix this up for you. Back to the first topic, the disappearance of the wax figure. What on earth is happening here at this wax museum? The answer is indicated by the stack of bills peering cutely from your purse. As far as I could tell, you appear to have around 200 pounds there. Th this is my money. So then, what is the meaning behind that huge sum of money? The direction of your gaze is incredibly honest, Madame Rousson. The thing it's aimed at is our answer. The meaning behind that 200 pounds is indicated by this placard. It's true, the madam glanced toward the wall just now. But can you really sell a wax figure for 200 pounds? Huh? I mean, I'm sure she poured her heart and soul into making it. It's probably really important to her. I don't think I sell something like that no matter how much money I was offered. I guess the fact that I probably sell it right away makes me a corrupted adult. <laughs> Anyway, it looks like there might be another meaning behind the madam's 200 pounds. Let's check the direction of a gaze one more time. Let's look at this old man first. Or this middle-aged man, excuse me. This guy looks like he's alive. As far as I can tell by looking, he doesn't seem to be a wax figure or a serial killer. Ah, I sure wouldn't pay 200 pounds for him. I don't think this guy's for sale anyway. 
things in the way of visitors trying to get through, lying there. I doubt someone put him there on purpose. Well, in this wall over here that she may have been looking at. There's a sign pin here. Let's see. It. What does it say? To Connet Rosad. <laughs> That's still not a photo. To Connet Rosad, proprietor of Madame Rosad's wax museum. We'll be taking the prisoner from this room. If you want him back, it'll cost you 200 pounds. Have the money ready by noon on October 23rd. What? This almost sounds like one of those letters they demand money with, with, like you see in kidnapping cases. It's called a ransom note. Ransom note. Sign is updated to the ransom note, so let's present this ransom note. The real reason why she has that money. The meaning behind that 200 pounds is indicated by this ransom note. Also, I, I'm gonna say it again, they really went all out this time around for all the joint reasoning in this case. It is really dynamic this time. Quite! It takes a rather comical criminal to kidnap a wax figure. No! Either way, I'm surprised you were able to prepare 200 pounds on such short notice. That wax figure was special. I had to scrape together all my resources. In other words, you gather that 200 pounds as ransom. Now then, let us investigate the next question at hand. Just who is this middle-aged man enjoying a good faint here? It would appear that the man has was dealt quite a terrible blow. You wouldn't happen to know what it was that made him pass out, would you? Uh... Unfortunately, it seems you're not very good at hiding things. The thing that dealt that man the blow was that 200 pounds. So, what's the deal with this old guy then? I think we should ask the man himself when he wakes up. Let's try to preserve the artfulness of this deduction. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Hopes he worked hard on it. <laughs> Clearly this man really did sustain some sort of blow. What's the man I'm trying to hide? Let's take another look. Wow, Musatsan's hair is really long. You can't tell from the front, can you? Her braid kind of looks like it could be used as a whip. I bet I could have knocked that middle-aged man flat with one crack. I don't think it's quite capable of that. She's hiding something with her other hand, but we'll get to that eventually. So she's willing to pay a giant mountain of cash like that just to get her wax figure back, huh? I wonder what kind of serial killer it was of. I don't know what to say about the fact that the only answer here is a serial killer. Either way, I guess that would mean that middle-aged man has something to do with it. We might as well let him have a good rest. Alright, so she's hiding something in her hand over here, if we can get to it. Really hard to see because I can't scroll down that far. This is the madam's right hand. I guess it must be. We can see her left hand pretty clearly. But if you look at it closely, this is actually a left hand too. I, I wish you wouldn't say scary stuff like that, Iris Chan. Plus, this hand looks kind of stiff. Maybe more like rock solid. Rock solid. Wait, no way. Could it belong to a wax figure? Updated! A wax figure's arm. Alright, we're gonna present this. This is more than likely what knocked him out! The thing that dealt the blow to that middle aged man was that wax figure's arm. To put it simply, he was probably whacked with that rock solid arm. I don't know what you're talking about. Regarding that hand peeking out from behind your back, logically, it should be your right hand. But if you look closely, it's actually a left hand. Oh. Not 
only that, but it appears to belong to a man, and it's hard as a rock. In other words, that's not your arm. It belongs to a wax figure. Ah! <laughs> that is a big arm. We get them sometimes. Incredibly rowdy visitors, I mean. They get too wild and end up damaging the wax figures. So, you mean that arm? Yes, this gentleman plucked it off as a keepsake. That's a rather audacious choice of a souvenir, isn't it? it? Reminds me of people who snap off cherry blossom branches when they go flower viewing. <laughs> so I was decisive and took the necessary measures. So you cornered the man, stole back the arm, and whacked him with it. And that was what was left. And that was what left him in that state. Well, regardless of the end of the man came to, it seems we've arrived at our conclusion. It was seen that the serial killer was kidnapped from the special exhibit room. I'm glad we got to that. <laughs> conclusion, it was kidnapped. Salt. The location of the wax figure is the second topic. I'm pretty sure it's still missing at this point. Now then, we must now ask, where did the wax figure in question go? Let us consider that question next. Uh, how can you... The thing that catches my attention at this point are the folks standing over there. Just who is that man? The answer can be found in the scarf around his neck, of course. According to Holmesan, this is code used to warn fellow officers that a crime is in progress. Apparently, it's a way of contacting backup when they don't want to reveal themselves. It's a secret code just for detectives. Well, it's not much of a secret now. Holmesan just blabbed the secret, though. Well, exposing secrets is a detective's job, after all. <laughs> That's quite a loophole. It's not wrong. Anyway, judging by Madame Rosat's reaction, there might be other hints that reveal his identity. Yeah, for one thing, I don't think this is a real person. And there's the answer right there. L look! The end of the metal rod is sticking out of his shoulder. Huh. I guess it goes without saying, then. This guy isn't a real person. It looks like his whole arm, including the sleeve, was ripped off at the shoulder. A ripped off arm, huh? We just heard something like that. Let's present the shoulder rod. <laughs> Who is he? The thing that indicates that is this. The shoulder rod, of course. No human has bones like that. I can guarantee you that. Which means that the young plainclothes detective, John Clay, is standing before us. And a truly surprising turn of events is in fact a wax figure. You were the one who declared him human, Home Son. <laughs> nope, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the spotlight. After all, he became a celebrity after winning the Superintendent General's Award three times last year. So I had the wax figure made of him right away. That's the natural thing to do! What else is there to say? So the arm that man plucked off belonged to this detective. This guy must be alive. Now let us direct our attention to the sinister looking old man sitting near him. He hasn't moved a muscle this whole time. Almost as if he's a wax figure. Oh, uh, oh well. I thought so. You reacted to my words just now, madam. Probably because that was an atrocious deduction. The moment I laid eyes on him, I noticed it. This tag. Whether or not this old man is a wax figure is indicated by this price tag. The murderous officer Ottermole. Did I get that right? Is he famous? The papers talk about him all the time last year. I don't know what he looked like though. But anyway, three pence seems super cheap, doesn't it? That's what gas costs at Garrett's lodging house. A special serial killer kidnapped from the special exhibit room, huh? 
special wax figure that the kidnapper could demand a sum like 200 pounds for. Could that really be the murderous officer Otomo? Let's have one last good look around. Yeah, that twitchy feet, restless feet. Th this guy's old, this old guy's leg. It's bouncing like crazy. But he seems to be asleep. So then, it's not that he's consciously bouncing it. It must be a muscle spasm. Either way, wax figures don't bounce their legs. Or have muscle spasms. And now that I look at this old guy more closely, he has a familiar looking scarf tied around his arm. Is that Lola and Pat's scarf? Like, wait, why does it have a price tag? Huh? Hold on. That is a weird easter egg. I hope Lola and, and Pat are fine. Like, what the heck? I keep trying to say patrol, but his name is Pat, and then her, his fiance is Roll. Rolla, or something. Anyway, uh, whether or not this old man is a wax figure is indicated by this twitching leg. A wax figure can't twitch his leg, no matter how well it's made. How well ma a wax figure can't twitch his leg, no matter how well made it is. Which means... That this high-quality old man is a real Scotland Yard officer! You started treating him completely different than you were earlier. Well, what do you have to say to yourself, Madame Rosad? What do you mean, well? I'm the one who contacted the police and got that old man to come here. But he seems awfully worn out. He's fast asleep. Um, so what about this three pence price tag then? He must have forgotten to cut the tag off the scarf he bought at the flea market. And do you remember this scarf, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, it's code to let other officers know that a crime is in progress, right? Yes, it's true. A crime has occurred. This has the good detective noticed right off the bat when he began his deduction. He was just slightly off at his conclusion. It would seem that we've arrived at our at last at our answer. A special serial killer wax figure was kidnapped from the special exhibit room. And Scotland Yard is already in the midst of investigating, but the missing wax figure's whereabouts are still unknown. This has been Sherlock Holmes' famous deduction. The wax figure kidnapping is still being investigated. I figure as much. I mean, that's the only other solution, right? The wax figure isn't found. Woo! That was quite an adventure, Reed. Men and women, young and old. The occasional gentleman who drops by on his way home from the pub. I get all sorts of visitors. However, visitors who dare cause harm to my wax figures. I absolutely refuse to let them off easy. But setting that aside... <gasps> what a twirl! So that was one of those famous deductions I've heard so much about. It was quite moving. The pleasure is all mine. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Well, I suppose that middle-aged man will wake up in due time and head home. More importantly, what I'm curious about is... Was the wax figure on display in that room truly kidnapped? Yes, it certainly was. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could tell me more about that. About the wax figure's kidnapping, I mean. Very well. However, you will return to your post at once as soon as I've finished. Pfft. 
This great detective is wasted as a wax figure, if you ask me. Lol. Alright, now we can talk to Madame Roussad. Can we get through everything before we have to stop? The kidnapping of the wax figure. So, what do you mean when you say the wax figure was kidnapped? It happened a few days ago. I arrived at the museum in the morning and... I noticed that the wax figure had vanished from the special exhibit room. The special exhibit room, huh? So that's why the curtain was closed. And then, I found the ransom note. So the thief must have snuck in during the night and stolen the figure then. The stolen wax figure was probably another bad guy, right? He was an extraordinary bad guy, you see. You see? It was none other than the man who carved his name indelibly into the British criminal history. The Professor. I've never heard of the guy. It appears that everything has finally come together. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Narhodo? Huh? The professor? He was active around the time that I was born, right? Yeah, that's right, Iris. It was ten years ago. That serial killer had all of London quaking in its boots. Ten years ago? Yes, it was just around. The time that Baroque Van Zeeks graduated from London University. Huh? No, no way. So the huge case that completely changed Reapy's life was... That's right. It was the professor's case. The professor. So the who the heck was he? Who the heck was he, excuse me? Ah, the professor. Ten years ago, series of cruel serial murders set the Great British Empire trembling. The killer was arrested after killing five people and executed. And now he's been turned into a wax figure to entertain the people of London. Well, he apparently ended up being kidnapped and isn't around today, unfortunately, but you get the picture. So, so then, what does that have to do with Prosecutor Van Zeeks? How was it that the professor managed to carve his name into British crime history? It's because his choice of victims spurred the British government into action. The... victims? The ones he killed were the elite, members of the prestigious noble families. Some of them even had ties to the royal family. That was enough to get even the government shaken. Nobles. Uh, wait a minute. I think Dr. Dirtpoor told us this earlier. That Lord Van Zeeks came from a powerful noble family. It was the fifth murder that ended up leading to the professor's arrest. And the name of the young noble who acted as his final victim was Cribbit Van Zeeks. What? V Van Zeeks? I'll leave the rest to your imagination. The younger brother, whose other brother was stolen from him by that serial killer, ended up pursuing prosecuting after that, and ended up becoming known far and wide by the name Grim Reaper. I had no idea that the Lord, that Lord Baroque Van Zeeg had a past like that. Now then, I believe that's about all I can tell you. After all, right now I'm... <laughs> supposed to be a temporary wax figure. In that case, I need to be going as well. Uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Okay, it looks like we're gonna finish this entire investigation. We're gonna go slightly over, but we're very close to finishing, so. I didn't expect you to go out of your way to come see me.
It's been so long. I'm glad to see you again, Baroque. It's been ten years, hasn't it? I didn't expect to see you again like this. I can't forgive myself for what happened to Mr. Kingsley. I never dreamed that something like that would... Your trial is tomorrow. Y yeah I've got a young oriental lawyer. He's a trustworthy chap. It was all just an unfortunate accident. He'll definitely prove that. In regards to that. Y yeah, I heard. You're going to be the prosecutor. I see. Actually, I heard something after returning to this country. Baroque, I heard that, um, in trials you prosecute. Spit it out. No, never mind. I know you're only thinking of me here. This is none other than a trial of a close friend. I couldn't leave it to anyone else. Yeah, I know. I'll be counting on you tomorrow, Baroque. Well then, I'll be seeing you tomorrow in court. Oh! Things are awkward, but also thank you for giving us that scene. Baroque is like, I am conflicted. Sometimes I hate my job. <laughs> to be continued, <laughs> we will definitely continue into the trial in the next video. So I'll see you guys then.